Just a quick announcement. All prison ministry members are asked to meet with Brother Sir Bryce around to the back at this time. So all prison ministry members are asked to meet Brother Sir Bryce around to the back. So just go out the door and go to your right. Amen. Thank you very much, Brother Griffith, for that beautiful song. It's a song I love very much. This morning we were looking at the languages of love and how God expresses that language of love to us. For those who came in late, we welcome you to Valencia Church. Please have a blessed sitting with us today. The last language of love we want to look at this morning is physical touch. Now, Jesus knew the importance of physical touch. He knew and still knows that a touch can bring about a feeling of renewal, safety, and comfort. A touch sometimes does what words can't do, right? In Matthew 8, 14 to 15, Jesus touched Peter's mother-in-law and he took away her fever. In Matthew 9, 27 to 31, he touched the air and tongue of a deaf mute and he began to hear and he began to speak. In Mark 40, 42, we are told that he touched even a leper. 
which was forbidden then, and he made him clean. A touch is important. You know, the other day when I had, I had my accident, <laughs> persons who were wrong <laughs> ran to me and was trying to touch me. And I didn't want anybody to touch me at the time at all, at all, at all. And they would tell me, get up, get up of that hot ground. And I was so into my pain and into myself, I didn't want that touch. But when I got to the hospital, and I was in utter agony waiting to be attended to, I was happy that I could have leaned on my husband's shoulder. I needed a touch then. There have been times when you probably were going through your crucibles. And maybe just a touch, a pat on the shoulder. Somebody, your sister gave you a little hug. And say, girl, hang in there. Boy, do give up, as Brother Bunny would say. That touch meant a lot to you. I'm not talking about willy-nilly going around touching people. I'm not talking about that. But I'm talking to be sensitive to the needs of others. That sometimes our word alone is not enough. And Jesus knows when a word alone is not enough. He continues to touch us through his spirit, through his grace. Could you look back at a time when you really know Jesus had touched you? Some of us are so into ourselves, into our situations, into our troubles and our trials that we don't feel the hand of God working in our lives. Because like me and the ground, I'm, I was so into myself. So you're so into a situation when God is, my friends are handing me, reaching out to me, and I didn't want them to touch me. I just fling them away and say, leave me alone. <laughs> and I stayed there on the ground. Are you still on the ground when Jesus is holding out a hand to you in your situation, in your problem? Maybe he wants to save you. He's saying, come my child. There's an appeal and an invitation for you today. If you don't know Jesus, he's ready to touch you today. I want to stand and sing that song, and I want you to really mean it. He touched me. Oh, he touched me. And oh, the joy that filled my soul. Something happened. We want something to happen today as prison ministry is here. If you have not accepted Jesus and accepted his touch today, we invite you to do it today as you fellowship with Valencia Church. The words are coming up on the screen. Let's stand as we sing that song, Shackled by a Heavy Burden. Are you shackled today? Sabbath School wants to invite you to let Jesus break those shackles for you today. Mike, Purple mic, please. And yellow, please. Put on the mics. Shackled by a heavy burden Beneath the lotus and
Sabbath school, someone is in need of your touch today. They are opening their hearts to you today to just come in. Oh God, you know what they are going through. You know the situation in their lives, in each of our lives. May we feel that touch today. May we open ourselves to the working of your spirit in our lives. Even for those amongst us who have not accepted you as Savior, today you reaching out your hand to touch them, God. Help them to take hold of that hand, oh Father. And to know that in you there's joy, there's peace, there's pleasure forevermore. Bless us as we go into the divine hour. Now we pray in Jesus' name. Please be seated. We want to thank you for being part of our Sabbath school today. We welcome our viewers online. They are now joining us online and those around the world, around the World Wide Web, who join us now. We are happy that you are worshiping with Valencia today. Feel free to pull your hymnals wherever you are. Sing along and worship with us. May God continue to bless and to keep us. Okay, doesn't want to open. Happy Sabbath once again, everyone. Are we having a blessed sitting this morning? Are we excited to see what's in store for the rest of the day today? I know I am. All right, so at this time, we'll just go through quickly a few announcements. They would have been circulated via WhatsApp. Uh, again, if you want to be part of the church's WhatsApp uh, broadcast list, feel free to send a message to 318-0717. That's 318-0717. And then you'll get instructions after that. Okay, so this announcement is coming from the South Caribbean Conference. South Caribbean Conference Adventist Layman's Services Industries. Right? Adventist Layman's Services Industries on Sunday, April 21st, there is a call. I need to get this letter to open. I apologize. Where is the flyer? Isn't okay. I will. I will announce this a little later on. Right. All right. So we'll move on. Okay. So for AY today. Prison Ministries are here, and they will be staying with us, and they will be taking up uh, AY service today. So please, we are inviting you and asking you to remain with us. Come back. AY starts at 4, right? Next Sabbath, AY, we will do the karaoke AY once again, right? It was announced last week for this week, but that will be moved to next Sabbath. 
of Valencia SDA Women's Ministry Department would like to say thank you. Your generosity made our presence at the Festival of Boots a tremendous success. Right? So thank you to everyone who contributed and everyone that participated in this year's Festival of Boots. A Valencia SDA Women's Ministry would like to announce its Guide to Self-Care Seminar. It's a Guide to Self-Care Seminar with our very own Sister Kayan Stratton john right? This is carded for Sabbath 20th April at 3.30 p.m. Sabbath 20th April at 3.30 p.m. Let's make steps towards an improved you. So all ladies, we're calling on you to be part of this. You gentlemen, of course, you are welcome to stay. Coming from the uniform clubs, all newly inducted MITs, that's Master Guides in Training, and also all persons 16 and above that are interested in joining the Master Guide program Please attend a short meeting today at 3 p.m. with the MIT leader, Sister Candice Jervis. All right? So please attend a short meeting today at 3 p.m. with Sister Candice Jervis. It will be an introductory session covering the Master Guide program. All right? And that is the end of the announcements for today. Right, paging Sister Candice, paging Sister Candice. Okay, at this time we will continue with some hymns of praise. We'll start with hymn number 100. After this, I'll take one hymn from this side and one hymn from this side. Brother Bertie, you hear? here? All you know, Brother Bert, he just call you him first, like he's not here, I ain't hearing him, right? He would have done call that him before I finished talk. So now is your chance to find a him. I hope it's one I know. <laughs> I hear in 511 already. <laughs> so you all have to help me at this time, right? Great is thy faithfulness. Sorry. Great is thy faithfulness. Morning by morning, new mercies I see. All I have need in thy hands have provided. Great is thy faithfulness. Lord unto me, great is thy faithfulness, O God my Father, there is no shadow of turning with thee, thou changest not. Lord unto 
That was 511. Which side just came on? Who called 511? All right, so this side. So I need to hear you loudest, right? All right. I know not why God's wondrous grace to me he has made known, nor why unworthy Christ and love redeemed me for his own.
Please be seated in his presence. Happy Sabbath, everyone. Right, we are the United Prison Ministries. Sorry about that. So we are the United Prisons Ministries. Um, we, as we await the platform personnel to come up, we want to thank you for having us here. And so we'll have our praise team come forward at this time. And we'll sing one song as we have the personnel for the platform come up. He'll sing number 10. Thank you so much. No, the church priest team. Church priest team. Our Father and our God, we come before you this morning in recognition of who you are, 
We thank you for the invitation to come into your courts and to fellowship one with each other. We pray, God, that your spirit will be with each person as individuals, even as you bless us as a congregation. May it be that our fellowship here today will be one that will strengthen, one that will empower, one that will cause us to reaffirm our commitment to you, even as you have continued to show us favor. So bless us today. And when we leave, may we leave rejoicing. May we leave looking forward to the day when you shall come. We ask these mercies in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Well, the privilege is mine this morning to welcome us all to church this morning. Today's a high day in Israel, and I am happy to be here this morning. I know that you are happy as well to be here. God has been good to me, and because of his goodness to me, I am just sharing his goodness to you. So receive God's goodness that I am sharing to you this morning. I know that you would have had a wonderful week. Some may say that it was, like I, I, when I asked my class this morning, how was the week? One said, boring. But I'm saying, because God woke us up every morning, it cannot be boring. It cannot be boring. So I want to welcome you again to Valencia this morning as we have our prisons ministries team with us today. And there is one thing that we are all are we all are we are all prisoners for Christ? You thought I said that we are all prisoners, but that we're bad. <laughs> no, we are all prisoners for Christ. We are crisis by birth and we are crisis by redemption. So we belong to Him. And so, with that in mind, we just give Him the honor, we'll give Him the glory because of who He is and thank Him for what He has done. And we have been singing beautifully this morning, and we'll continue that trend of singing as we sing song number 457, I Love to Tell the Story. And after today, we will continue to love to tell the story as to the prisons, ministries, the mission that they do, and so we can be involved as well in that whole aspect of the work of mission. 457, I Love to Tell the Story. You will stand with us as we sing this song. Okay, sorry, brethren. It's um, sorry about that, that comes a little lower down. <laughs> we have a ministry of music now by Brother Grant. Sorry again. There are times in our lives when we pray and we ask God for certain things in our lives. And somehow we tell ourselves when we are not heard immediately that God is not hearing. Sometimes we doubt him. But I want to let you know this morning that God can do for us what we cannot do for ourselves. He is able. In a flood of doubt and pain, pray the best we can. 
Now we must leave it in his hands. Yet I know when my eyes fail to see, God is able. Even though it seems impossible to me, He is able. But if He chooses not to move in the way that we would, Confident he's working all together for my good. I will stand behind his word for he is able. He's able. Question seems to haunt you night and day. How could God allow your heart to be torn this way? Does He listen when you call? Or is He even there at all? Yet I know when my eyes fail to see, God is able. Even though it seems impossible to me, He is able. If he chooses not to move in the way we prayed he would, be confident he's working all together for our good. And we'll stand behind his word, for he is a. Evaporates away. I'll stand to face another day. I will stand. The, the Lord with our tithes, our offerings, and our gifts. As the deacons written us for the tithes, offerings, and gifts. Normally we have the second basket, and because we have our prison ministry.
build the prison ministries as they continue to work for you, that you will just continue to fill their coffers so that some soul that is behind bars can hear of you and can come to call you blessed. We are just rejoicing, Lord. We are just rejoicing in the fact that you are who you are. In Jesus' wonderful name, amen. amen. Our scripture reading is taken from Luke 15, verses 20 to 31. Luke chapter 15, verses 20 to 31. And I read. And he arose and came to his father. But when he was yet a great way off, his father saw him and had compassion and ran and fell on his neck and kissed him. And the son said unto him, Father, I have sinned against heaven and in thy sight, and I am no more worthy to be called thy son. But the father said to his servants, Bring forth the best robe and put it on him, and put and put a ring on his hand and shoes on his feet and bring hither the fatted calf and kill it and let us eat and be merry. For this my son was dead and is alive again. He was lost and is found and they began to be merry. Now his eldest son was in the field, and as he came and drew nigh to the house, he heard music and dancing. And he called one of the servants and asked what these things meant. And he said unto him, Thy brother is come, and thy father had killed the fatted calf, because he had received him safe and sound. And he was angry and would not go in. Therefore came his father out and entreated him. And he answered and said to his father, Lo, these many years do I serve thee, neither transgressed, and at, this, and at any time thy commandment, and yet thou never givest me a kid, that I might that I might make merry with my friends. But as soon as thy, this son was come, which had devoured thy living with harlots, thou hast killed for him the fatted calf. And he said unto him, Son, thou art ever with me, and all that I have is thine. Amen. May the Lord add a blessing to the reading and the understanding of his word. I'm here to offer special prayer on somebody who needs someone to intercede on their behalf. If you are that person, I'm asking you to just stand and walk up to the altar and I will do just that on your behalf. Hallelujah. Let us stand, please.
Heavenly Father, creator of heaven and earth, we come in your presence in the beautiful name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, by whom were all things made, and without him was not anything made that was made. In Jesus is life original, unborrowed, underived. We come, Lord, to express how grateful and thankful we are because of your loving kindnesses and tender mercies. We thank you for traveling mercies, bringing us here safely and in our right frame of mind. We give you thanks and praises, not so much because of what you have done, but because of who you are. We praise and bless your holy name. Lord, each and every one of us ha, 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 has come to know that, that God is beautiful. We have all come to know that God is a wonderful and an awesome God. So we praise you and we bless your holy name. Your Holy Spirit has drawn us unto yourself because... You are the source of the fulfillment of every need that we would encounter. We place before you our trials, our tribulations. We place before you our challenges. We place before you, O oh Lord, all the, the circumstances that, that will confront us so that we can remove ourselves from the presence of God. So we come, Lord, so that you could give us power. You, you could give us spiritual energy, spiritual fortitude, so that in spite of our challenges, we could still worship you. In spite of our ups and downs, and the difficulties that, that come before us, we can still shout hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. We look at these trials, Lord, <coughs> as educators, teaching us, Lord, who we are and who we are in need of. So may you, Lord, rest. May your Holy Spirit anoint us afresh. May we leave this place refreshed. May we leave this place rejuvenated, Lord. Lord, bless somebody. Bless somebody who are even in the middle, in, in the, the valley of decision, deciding whether to, to, to call Christ their Lord and Savior or turn the other way. Give that individual power. Give that individual strength and energy to resist all the temptations that, that will seek to draw them away from the source of, of, of their life. May you bless each of us as we sit at your feet today. Minister to us according to our needs. Please, Lord, during this week we may have done wrong in thought, word, deed, or in action. Please, Lord, please, I beg you, on behalf of these folk, I beg you, Lord, uh, forgive us. Wash us and cleanse us from all unrighteousness because you promise us you will do that. So we take you at your word, Lord. So come and honor your word in our lives and cause us to experience freedom. Lord, you have a word for us and you have a vessel that you have chosen to speak this word to us. May you anoint that vessel, even Pastor St. Bryce. Anoint him from the crown of his head to the sole of his feet. And as he speaks to us, Lord, may we receive your word with joy and gladness and with the desire to follow you 
each and every step of the way. May you bless us and keep us, Lord. And when you shall come, Jesus, save all of us and our loved ones in your eternal kingdom. In Jesus' precious name we pray. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. So it's not this. Yeah.
I've, good morning, everybody. Happy Sabbath. Uh, I've learned that true stories are the best stories. Yeah, if you can identify with that, say me too. Okay, well, you don't want to answer me. But I'm just saying, I, I found so. And the fact of the matter is we, we do have, we all have stories to tell. And today we will hear from some persons, some this morning, some this afternoon. I just want to um, just make two introductions. Um, Brother Griffith, who would have sang for us this morning so beautifully, um, that great with the Phipps song um, that he, he's able. But a grand sorry, but what I said. But a, oh no, but a Griffith will sing later. Right? <laughs> um, but a grand, but a grand song for us this morning. And when people sing from an experience, it sounds sweeter to me. You know, and, and that would have come out from from but a grand expression this morning. We, we perhaps hear from him a little late this afternoon uh, when you hear they tell some of their stories and so on. So, really and truly, this morning, we are just speaking to you as, as prison ministry facilitators. Uh, this afternoon, you will hear more from those who have experienced um, the, the, the transformation and the grace of God. Uh, but but some of you can come this evening, and we regret that. So we do have some stories inserted this morning, right? The so you will hear from from one of our persons, brother Jai Karan. But we hear from him a little closer to to lunchtime. Um, but we will hear from right now. One of our facilitators, Brother Charles, and one of our trophies, uh, Sister Carrie Ann. So they will share with you not so much their testimony of transformation, but they'll just share about the benefits of, of the prison ministry. They will do that for a short while this morning. And then we will follow the program. By, by that I mean we will have um, just an introduction, then we will have um, Brother Jaikran's testimony, we'll have music, and then we'll have the whatever time we have remained, we'll have that spoken word there, right? But we're working with the time and not so much the program, yeah? <laughs> so at this time, let's, we, we want to just welcome with a loud, however you do it in Valencia, I don't know how you would welcome people in Valencia, just welcome our, our two our trophy and our facilitator as they share for us the next few minutes. <laughs> My name is Carrie Ann Hosang. Yes. Now, it is indeed a blessing to be here this morning. I want to give God thanks for life in many, many ways. Yes, I want to thank God for the prison ministry in a very big way as well. I was incarcerated for 17 years. Yes, and just a little more, but I looked forward to seeing the ministry members when weekend comes. Yes, because on a weekend, no matter how I felt, Friday afternoon into Sabbath morning, I was great. No matter how down I was, I was great. Yes? The ministry was able to share God's goodness, not only with me, but with other persons. And I recommitted my life to God inside. And I can stand here this morning and proudly say that I was able to witness an ex-inmate commit themselves and their lives to God last Sabbath at Five Rivers. So... Through the ministry, God has been working, and I pray that you all could feel free to probably join us, yes, so that more lives, like my own and my friend and sister now in Christ, could be saved and could be expanded as well. Yes, I want to give God thanks again for the persons in the ministry who continuously give support spiritually, mentally, 
sometimes in a physical way because they would carry stuff to inmates in need. Yes? So I pray that God continuously gives the persons in the ministry strength and you ladies and gentlemen of the church here this morning. Free free, as I said, to always join the ministry, if not free free, to donate, to send stuff, books, toiletries for the ministry so that the persons inside can be reached as well. I don't remember seeing my sister, but I've been around for the last almost 20 years in the ministry. And uh, the benefits that I have gotten from it, uh, as a matter of fact, I looked forward every Sabbath morning. You don't understand. When you go to a prison and you see folks, you see God's people in there. Now, we are all God's children, that's all. Are you there? We are all God's children. We are not all in the same place at times. I went to Carrera for many, many years, and I've met my good brother here, blessing. And my, is the word that's Gouda? They ain't no Gouda, right? Good brother across the Mark Jaikaran. When I get there, I am more blessed in seeing them than they in seeing me. Sometimes we believe that, uh, that, uh, that they can't do anything. I remember one morning going to, to Golden Grove, because I've been around for a while. I stepped into a car, and the conversation came up, and the driver asked me where I'm going. So I said, I'm going to Golden Grove Prison. And he started off by trying, let me use the word lambasting those folks who were in there, and I had to stop him. I said, you're only out here because you haven't gotten quarters yet. And the story changed. You see, it may look to you and I, or to those out there, that those in there are nothing. I love to go there. When my, should I say my boss, right? Asked me where I'm going. I'm going back to Carrera Prison, by the grace of God. My strength, believe it or not, I gain it a lot when I go in, in there. Not that I don't have, you know. When I see men, I, not women, but I, when I see men, who are endeavoring by the grace of God to turn their lives around. It gives me great pleasure this morning to tell you that the benefits, not only uh, they derive it from it, but I, we, who go there, do the same. May God continue to bless all of us. It gave me great pleasure, such a joy to be in the presence of God in fellowshipping and worshiping with his people. There were times I could not have been imagining fellowshipping with you all. But I'm here today. From death to life. But there's so much that we want to share with you. And you will best be getting a tip of the iceberg because we want you to return this evening. Because there's so much we want to share with you. But I stand this morning, one who was privileged to benefit from the prison ministry. Yes, I've grown in Adventist home. 
I've been active in God's church. And I feel miserably. I bring shame. And I've been disgraced. Because of disobedient, have led me to a place that I've never imagined or dream of in being. But on the first of March, seven thirty PM, my God said, Enough is enough. 26 years is enough. And here I am with you this morning. From magistrate to trial. From trial to death row. Was sentenced to die. From death to life. And there are so many things that I want to share with you. And I want to encourage you. As being part of the prison ministry team, the door is open to welcome each and every one of you. The Muslim The main focus on the fundamental beliefs on the fair five pillars of Islam. And one that they focus on is to try their best to visit Mecca. But if we would go through our Bibles, we would discover there are other pillars. That we need to accomplish as well. Because remember when Christ come, he's going to tell us, you remember when I was sick, when I was hungry. You remember that son or that daughter that might be present at this time behind prison bar. Some relatives, some dear friends, and too often, we as good church Christians believe, if we use often these words, tough love. We need to allow them to be by themselves, that they would learn a lesson. Could you imagine if God had just said, tough love, leave us just for a moment? My dear brothers and sisters this morning, there's so much more to share with you. And if you are interested, and I earnestly plead with you this morning, if you have loved ones behind prison bar, don't matter what they have done, Because the reason why I'm here, because I was once there, and Christ reminded me, no matter what I have done, that he loved me. Because the life that I once was living, God allowed me to be in a place where I was spending 26 years. Because you know, if I were outside, I would have been six feet and forgotten. But there's so much more to share with you. Looking forward, for you will return this evening to hear so many more, not just from me, but from others that would encourage you to be ambassadors in the vineyard and sharing the good news to men, even though 
there behind prison bar. May God bless you. Yeah, I'm happy to be here this morning, this afternoon. Um, nevertheless, before I go further, I just want to say thank you, Paul. Jeremy Paul, could you stand and the family? You know, this is one of our friends. You know, God has been extremely good to us over the years. We're happy to have you. And his wife gave him tremendous support. But I know God is doing a great work in his life. So we're happy to have you. We hope. We hear you this afternoon. There's so much more. So you can sit. Okay, is Brother James here? Brother James here? Okay, I don't know. Nevertheless, um, Mr. June, I'm happy that you came. Thanks for coming. You can stand. Yes, yourself. <laughs> Thanks for accepting our invitation. We're happy that you come to Valencia. Amen. Okay. You know, God has been very good. I want to let you know that the, the folks in Romania this morning, I told them we'll be here. They say, I just want to share, you know, the, the love to the folks in Valencia. They wish they could have come out, you know, to join with you all. One thing that impressed me this morning, though, the singing. The singing was fantastic. You know, uh, when you hear them sing from their heart, you know, you know. And they had all their accompanying music. Nevertheless, God has been extremely good to us, and um, this morning, we, or this evening, we have a special, Mr. Ronda, we invited her to come and sing for us, and as we finish singing, our speaker for today will come. So you go ahead. Sabbath. Happy Sabbath, everyone. So you have to sing a cappella, right? No music. That's what you get when you don't like tracks, Brother Grant. <laughs> okay, before I go any further, I want to. My brother, Mark Jaikaran. That's my brother. We grew up in church. We grew up in, you know, worshiping every, every morning. You know, the neighbors would say it's like sweet melody. They would hear the voices ringing out five o'clock in the morning. But his testimony was, it helped shape our family in a way that him being out would not have. Because we take it for granted that because we're in church, we cannot fall. And if I tell you the kind of a Christian that he was, you know, when we're growing up, you can't dance, you can't read no mills and boom, you can't do nothing. He, you know, he deal with you, you know. But the devil had plans, but God spoiled those plans. All right? So this morning, I just want to remind us that God has promised. I'm getting a bit emotional. All right? So for the ladies in the house, who are singers. I'm getting to that age where I keep forgetting the words of songs, all right? So, <laughs> I was supposed to download this song and I didn't. So you guys, I know I heard you singing sweet melodies, but a grant, so you guys would help me if I, yeah. Okay, thank you, brother. He promised us that he would be our counselor. A mighty God and a Prince of Peace. He promised us that he would be our Father. And he loved us with a love that will not cease. Well, I tried him and I found his promises, they're true. He's everything he said that he would be. 
And the foundest words I know cannot begin to tell just how much Jesus really means to me. For he is more wonderful than my mind can conceive. He's more wonderful than my heart can believe. He goes beyond my highest thoughts and found its dreams. He's everything that my soul ever longed for my keys everything he promised us and he's so much more he's more than amazing more than marvelous isn't he grand he's more than miraculous could ever be for he's more than wonderful and that's what Jesus is to me. And as I stand amazed to think, thank you, the King of glory. I can't come to live within this sinful heart. But I marvel just to know He really loves me When I think of who He is And who I am Sing with me, church For He is more wonderful Than my mind can conceive He's more wonderful than my heart can believe. He goes beyond my highest thoughts and found is free. For oh, He's everything, everything that my soul ever longs for He's everything He promised me and is so much more He's more than amazing Hallelujah He's more than marvelous He's more than miraculous Could ever be For He's more than wonderful and that's what Jesus is to me. He's everything that my soul's ever longed for. He's everything he promised us, Mark. He's so much more. It's more than amazing. Hallelujah. He's more than marvelous. He's more than miraculous. Could ever be. For he's more than wonderful. And that's what Jesus is to me. He's more than wonderful. And that's what Jesus is to us. He is indeed wonderful to me and also to you. 
this morning the privilege is, this evening the privilege is mine to introduce the speaker, a young and dynamic individual, one whom we have grown to love. He has always been involved with the youth's work, and I'm happy to introduce to you Pastor, I used to call him Brother St. Bryce, but I've recently learned that he is Pastor St. Bryce. So, congregation, we're happy to have him with us. God has given him a message, and I pray that you would listen to it all and be blessed. Amen. I'm just clearing the space here. Well, since you know who I am, we will go quickly. So listen fast. Our heads are bowed, our eyes are closed, hearts are lifted, heaven ward. Our Father, speak to us, give us understanding, then give us power and strength to do as you lead. We pray in Jesus' name. Amen. So there's no need to go back to the scripture reading. It's a very familiar story. And I've just entitled our short message this morning, The Three Prodigals. Three Prodigals. As a boy growing up, I, I, I felt that the word prodigal meant run away. So when people run away, we call them prodigals. When people disappear, we call them prodigals. But as I became older and I became wiser and the hair became grayer, I've come to recognize that prodigal is not about running away. Prodigal is about the use of resources. And therefore, when you say someone is prodigal, you are really saying that they are using in a lavish way resources that is in their possession. So the lavish use of resources makes one a prodigal. So we have the prodigal son, and I say, since we're going fast, we don't have to go back. You know what the story is. We have a prodigal son that wasted the resources that was given to him as he went a distant land. Found himself, of course, thankfully, and returned to his father. And then we had a prodigal son that was wasting the resources that was available to him and not using it accordingly. Hence, when the prodigal son that went away came back and the father, who by the way was also prodigal, and we will talk to him a little bit, the father was having a big party for the son that returned. The prodigal that stayed at home didn't like that too much. And so the father said to him, but all that I have is yours. In other words, the resources that is in the possession of the father belongs to the children. But since the prodigal son who stayed at home was not aware of that, he was waiting for a particular time to arrive based on the Jewish custom so that he can access the resources of the father. What the father said to him is, what are you waiting on? All that I have is yours. Not all that I have can be yours. Not all that I have will be yours. But all that I have is yours. In other words, if you wanted a calf, you could have get one all the time. If you wanted a ring, you could have have one all the time. If you wanted a party, just call your friends and have one. What you're waiting on? So we had prodigal wasting the resources with no variance. 
And then we had prodigal wasting the resources by not accessing what is available. We want to spend a little time on the, rec on the father the prodigal because father the prodigal is also lavishly extending to his children the grace that he has. Use of the resources is available regardless of where you have been. The resources are available to you. And I just want to pause for us because we don't have time to develop all these points. You see, I don't believe in, 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 in going, having church until it's time, on, until you feel to stop. I, I believe you have church and to stop when it's time to stop, not when you're finished. Right? So I, I want to stop when it's time to stop. So the father is also prodigal because he is exhibiting a kind of grace that is so strong, that is so powerful, that is so deep, that is so wide, sometimes we fail to understand it. Let me tell you what I mean by that. You see, some of us live in the realm of justice. That is, that is we, we, whatever people deserve, you get. And then some of us, we don't mind a little mercy sometimes. That is, some, some negative that someone is supposed to experience, that, that is avoided. So you were supposed to get some strokes, but you didn't get it, right? Or you were supposed to get some pay deduction because you came to work late, and, and, and the boss man said, you know what, okay, well, I'll still get your full pay. That is mercy. That is all right for some of us. We could live with that. You see the grace thing? We have problems with that. We sometimes even get agitated about it. Because you see what grace is, is when someone is getting a positive that they don't deserve. So somebody who was supposed to get fired, but they get promotion. Ahead of you. Well, partner, see water can wash that out. Everybody vexed. They're mad. They're angry. Face crew up. Because you see, when people are getting things that they don't deserve, we have problems with that. But that is what the prodigal father is about. That is what the prodigal father is about. So go where you go. Dance your dance. But when you return home, I am going to lavishly bestow my grace upon you. The prodigal father. And some of us have not come to the place where we understand that there is a prodigal father that is standing and waiting with arms open wide so that whosoever will may come. He says that whosoever will, for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, that whosoever believeth in him should not perish but have everlasting life. The prodigal father lives. And so, sometimes this prodigal father attitude is demonstrated in some strange ways because Isaiah tells us that his ways are not our ways, his thoughts are not our thoughts. And, 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 and love from the omnipotent, from the omnipresent and the omniscient is beyond our comprehension. And that love demonstrated sometimes is, is it beyond the human understanding and, of course, outside of the human expression. And so, in closing, I just want to give you the story of a twin sisters. Two sisters, they were twins. And they asked their father for a pony for their birthday. The father did not respond in any way to give any hint, but in the father's mind was, yeah, I will get them this pony. So one day it was arranged that the children would be taken out from, for some place so that the pony can be brought home. And so they went, and when the children came back from the trip, of course the pony was there, but the children came back a little earlier than was planned, so they had to hastily rush the pony 
into a hiding place so that the children would not see it. And, and, and the pony perhaps got a little excited, so he poops. <laughs> he poops and the parents didn't realize that he, he, he dropped a load there. And, and, and so when the children came, one child saw the poops and her expression was, what nastiness is this? The other child saw the poops and ran to the father and hugged them tightly and said, thank you, daddy, thank you. Because one child saw poops as dirtiness, the next child saw poops as evidence that the ponies are wrong. <laughs> I'm saying to us, God has ponies for all of us. But sometimes the evidence of that pony looks like poops. He says that whom he loves, he chastises. There are times when, when he has to take us through some trials and take us into some valleys and so on. It looked like poop, but it's pony. I'm, I'm saying to us this morning, God loves us with an everlasting love and nothing that he does is about hurting us. Everything, as a matter of fact, that he allows to come to us is about growing us into becoming a person that restores us to a position that we were in before we ever fell. So when you see a little poops, thank God for your pony. Because the prodigal father, the prodigal father knows nothing but love. Amen. Our Father, bless us and keep us in your love. Reveal yourself to us day after day more and more, so that revelation can draw us to you and give us care for each other. We ask it in Jesus' name. Amen and amen. Hymn number 75. Let's all stand as we sing, please. Closing hymn. There's a wonder of sunset at evening. The wonder of sunrise I see. But the wonder of wonders that thrills my soul is the wonder that God loves me. Is the wonder of God, the wonder of it all, just to think that God loves me. Oh, the wonder of it all, the wonder of it all, just to think that God loves me. There's a wonder of springtime and a harvest. The sky, the stars, the sun. But the wonder of wonders that thrills my soul is the wonder that's only Oh, the wonder of it all, the wonder of it all, just to think that God
God loves me. Oh, the wonder of it all, the wonder of it all, just to think that God loves me. Please remain standing for the benediction. Father, indeed, we are thankful for the spiritual food that we will have received this morning. And now we are about to leave to go to our various homes where we can partake of the physical. We ask, O oh God, that you will take us here safely and help us by your grace to return here safely this afternoon where we can continue to feed spiritually from you. May your love be with us and continue to be with us throughout the rest of the day. In Jesus' name we pray with thanksgiving. Amen. Amen. Please be seated. We are the United Prison Ministries. We thank you for being here with us this evening. But I want you to turn to the person next to you and say, come back this evening. I want you to turn to the person on the other side of you and say, this was just the appetizer. Tell the person that this was just the appetizer. So you have to come back this evening for the main course. Amen? You, uh, no, I, you're coming back for the main course this evening. Amen? So turn to the person behind you and say, I'm coming back for the main course. Yes, amen. Thank you so much for being here this morning. And we want you to come back at 3.30 p.m. this evening. What time? No, we're not sure. Tell the person 3.30. It will taste good. Come back. Yes, brethren, come back at 3.30 for the main course of what we have offered here today. Were you blessed by the appetizer? We yes. yes, so the main course will be even better. So at 3.30 p.m. this evening, AY starts, the United Prison Ministry team. You will hear from our trophies. You will have, it will have a beautiful panel discussion. It would not be boring. Do not associate panel with boring. And you will be able to ask your question. And I noticed they didn't pass the second basket, so we have to pass the second basket later. So you have to come back, because you didn't get to pass in the second basket. Amen? So thank you so much. Enjoy your Sabbath lunch, and we will see you this afternoon at 3.30 for the main course. Amen.